Welcome to the virtual college fair for all Virginia students sponsored by the Virginia Association of Collegiate Registrars and Admissions Counselors and StriveScan. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the full schedule at strivescan.com slash Virginia. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at that same website, strivescan.com slash Virginia. And now I'd like to turn it over to our very first presenter from Indiana University, Bloomington. Take it away. Thank you. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. My name is Jill Shimmick. I am the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions for Indiana University. I'm so excited that I can spend just a few moments with you tonight. IU was established in 1820 and since our uh, inaugural year 200 years ago, we've built a strong tradition of excellence and innovation. From nationally recognized academic programs to Division I varsity athletics, all in one of the most beautiful campuses in the country, IU will offer you rich experiences inside the classroom and out. Our 33,000 undergraduate students hail from all 50 states and over 140 countries. IU celebrates not only the geographic diversity of our student body, but it's ethnic, religious, political, and socioeconomic diversity that makes our learning community rich. 25% of our student body are domestic students of color and 40% of our students come from outside the state of Indiana. At the heart of an IU education is the ability for our students to customize their educational experiences. Our 12 schools offer more than 200 majors to choose from, meaning there's something for everyone. Students will be able to work with academic advisors and faculty to create an academic program that is uniquely customized to their interests. Whether it's pursuing a double major, multiple minors, or even creating their own major through our individualized major program, IU students are working towards careers that are not yet imagined. Indiana University Student Support Services help students succeed during their time at IU and beyond. Through individualized academic advising sessions, academic support centers throughout our campus, and our Wells Library Learning Center, students have access to tools to help them become the best student they can be. I use career services help students begin their careers before they leave campus by understanding their skills and interests um, and uh, uh, finishing their time at IU strongly. Our Career Development Center works with students who are still exploring during their freshman year and help them navigate IU's majors that will help them work in their field of choice. And then once a student has declared a major, they'll take classes with one, uh, uh, they'll take classes with one of our 12 school specific career centers and have access to resume workshops, internship and career for fairs and the hundreds of employers that come to IU every year to hire students. Over 30% of IU students will study abroad at least once before they graduate. IU offers over 300 study abroad programs in more than 60 countries and 18 languages, including English. More and more, we're seeing that our students combine their overseas study experience with an internship or hands-on research opportunity. At Indiana University, what you learn outside of the classroom will be as valuable as what you learn in your classes. With over 750 student organizations, 55 club and intramural sports, and a thriving arts and culture community that boasts over 1,500 performances on campus every year. From watching, a world, from watching an opera staged by the world-class Jacobs School of Music at IU to touring the Eskenazi Museum of Art, you'll find that the cultural resources at IU and in Bloomington rival that of a much larger city. Hoosier spirit is alive and well on the IU campus. Of our 24 varsity sports, the only two our students pay to go see are football and men's basketball. Roughly half of our undergraduates will purchase season tickets to these two sporting events. Assembly Hall boasts the largest student section in NCAA basketball and is known as the hardest place to be a visiting team. 
Hoosier hospitality at IU is exhibited throughout Indiana, the state of Indiana and the city of Bloomington and can be seen on our campus through the Culture of Care. Culture of Care is a campus-wide student-led and staff-supported initiative that focuses on creating a campus culture in which members of the IU Bloomington community demonstrate care for one another. Through bystander intervention, the Culture of Care empowers students to support their peers. And the Culture of Care initiative promotes helping one another, behavioral change, and raising awareness in four core areas, sexual well-being, mental health, alcohol and drug awareness, and respect. I strongly encourage prospective applicants to apply by our non-binding early action deadline of November 1st. Applying early action will offer students the highest admission and scholarship consideration, and you'll also have the privilege of hearing back from us early, letting you enjoy more of your senior year. The middle 50% of students who were admitted for fall 2020 had high school GPAs between a 3.61 and 4.0, although we give priority consideration to students with a B average or higher. SAT scores last year were between 1160 and 1370, and ACT scores were between, were between 25 and 32. Indiana University is a test optional institution. And so if you're considering, if you have scores and you're considering sending them to us, if your scores fall within our middle 50% range or exceed this range, that um, you're welcome to send them. Uh, we are looking for reasons to admit when we review your application and test scores within this range or above it would be a reason for, would be, uh, contribute to the list of reasons to admit you to Indiana University. Students can submit a complete application to IU through our internal application, apply IU, or through the common application or coalition application. I also welcome you to send questions directly to me. My contact information is listed here, jshimmick at indiana.edu. I am the counselor for all students in Virginia, so feel free to reach out with any questions. Thank you so much and have a great evening. Thank you. Uh, yeah, definitely just a reminder to keep sending in Q&A questions, and now we'll be hearing from Christopher Newport University. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for having me, and my name is Tyler Graham. I'm from Christopher Newport University. Um, just blessed to be able to have the opportunity to speak with you a little bit about Christopher Newport and what we're all about. Uh, you guys can see some basic information about the university on the screen here and, and it'll give you a lot more, you know, as we go along. Um, we have a stunning university. You might be able to tell a little bit in the picture behind me as well as in the picture that's kind of in the background of those, those stats. Um, we have really grown by leaps and bounds. Uh, we, we were basically turned into a university, went from being a commuter school to a full-fledged university in the early 90s, and we have grown greatly since then. Uh, we've put over a billion dollars uh, in, into campus in that time to make everything very new and state-of-the-art and really provide some, some amazing teaching and learning spaces for our students. Um, we're located in Newport News, Virginia, which is about, you know, halfway between Richmond and the Virginia Beach area. So right down the road from uh, Colonial Williamsburg and Bush Gardens. So lots for our students to do in the area. Anything you can think of, there, there's something to do uh, as well as on campus. Um, we have about 5,000 students on campus and we have a primarily undergraduate focus. Uh, of those 5,000 students, only about 200 are graduate level students. And we really, you know, emphasize the opportunities go to the undergraduate population those graduate programs are really just designed to, you know, accentuate the couple five year programs that we do have in education, financial analysis, as well as in some of the sciences. Um, our campus has been recently ranked in the top 20 most beautiful schools in the country. Obviously things being brand new and state of the art really helps with that, but it's an inspiring place with, with you know, new and, 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 and state of the art things, but as well as that, that classic architecture. And, you know, we really, want students to come and enjoy and feel welcome. And we really try to create a culture that, that all students feel welcome on campus. And, you know, you know, we've recently built our new fine arts center on campus. Uh, that'll be done shortly here in the spring. It'll go right hand in hand with the arts on campus that we already have in terms of reporting arts and our Ferguson Center, which brings in about 70 acts a year, which is fantastic for our students to get discounted tickets to those shows. and. You know, our residence halls have consistently ranked in the top 20 nationally, which is awesome. Um, and we really 
hope that our students kind of enjoy that experience as it gets better every year. You know, freshman year is kind of sweet style, uh, and then sophomore year you get an added living area, and then junior and senior year is apartment style housing where you get your own bedroom, your own bathroom, no hall bathrooms, and, and about 50% of our seniors stay on campus just because it's that nice to live on campus. And, you know, we do have a three-year residency requirement, but you know, our students don't really gripe about that. They really, really enjoy being on campus and being five to 10 minutes from all of their classes and all the activities that they want to get involved with. And while, you know, a lot of universities may have some similarities with Christopher Newport, we really believe the combination of size, location, culture, and opportunities really provide our students this special experience. We give a lot of personal attention. We have small class sizes. And we have this tight knit community that, you know, I think when you're on campus, you feel the difference. And I hope that you'll take the opportunity to come visit us for a single family on campus tour or do an interview with us, either virtually or in person. Uh, we really want you to take advantage of those opportunities and check us out. And, you know, a lot of what you'll see is stuff you might associate with a private university. But we really like to say that, you know, we have this you know the best of both worlds a, a private university feel with that but that public university price and we have the resources opportunities and the cost of a public institution and so yeah those definitely can be a nice combination and a nice blend at the size that we have that our students really have a rich experience we also have over 90 areas of study our top five are business biology communications computer science and psychology but those are just the most popular. All of our programs as we've grown as a university have really grown together and have tremendous resources to help our students be successful in whatever it is that you're passionate about. We also encourage students to pursue a lot of different areas. So you don't have to major in just one thing and you don't have to decide right away. You have until the second semester of your sophomore year to decide your major. Uh, we all specialize in the liberal arts and sciences. So you'll take a broad variety of classes over your first couple of years to really learn to think critically, communicate effectively in whatever it is that you decide you're passionate about. And by doing that, you'll be versatile, adaptable. It'll be impressive when you walk into those job interviews and internship interviews or those graduate school interviews as you try to move on to the things, like I said, that you're passionate about. We really want our students to have that foundation so they feel fully confident to seize those opportunities. Those small class sizes that I mentioned are big for us. About 60% of our classes are 19 students or fewer. We don't have any giant auditoriums. 99 seats is our biggest classroom and 75 to 80 students is about all we put in there. So, you know, you're never gonna be in some giant auditorium where nobody know, you know, you know, don't know people's names. Our faculty will know your name. They'll interact with you on a daily basis. You'll interact with your classmates on a daily basis. And our faculty are really, really distinguished. About 90% have a doctorate or the or in the highest degree in their field. We don't have any teaching assistants on campus as we just don't believe in that. Uh, and like I said, they'll know your name. They're really invested in your success. We recruit faculty that want to get to know you, want to invest in you, want to help you to ultimately be successful. And they are so connected for internship and job opportunities. So just really want to emphasize that. Tons of involvement for our students, over 200 plus clubs and organizations, which for a school our size is, is quite a lot. And it's easy to start one if for some reason we don't have something that you're passionate about. And then we have an amazing D3 sports program competing for championships regionally and nationally every single year. Tons of study abroad opportunities and really emphasize our students finding their community and creating all of the opportunities on campus for you to be able to do that. And at CMU, you're a captain for life. And uh, if you have questions about our admission process, we're holistic in our review, really emphasize interviewing with us. It's optional for general admission, but required for scholarship consideration. You can apply for early decision, early action, or regular decision. We do offer test optional and have done so for quite a few years. And then we, you can apply on Common App or Coalition. And please check out our Presence Leadership and Honors programs. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to answering any questions you might have. Thank you. Next, we'll be hearing from Hood College. Hello, I'm just gonna share my screen here. Um, well, hello, I'm Becca. Uh, I'm an admission counselor with Hood College and I'm the counselor who works with all students in Virginia. Um, so I'll be kind of a primary point of contact during this process. Um, Hood College is a private liberal arts college. We are located just up in Frederick, Maryland. 
Um, if you're not familiar with Frederick, it's one of the largest cities in Maryland. It's about an hour from Baltimore and an hour from DC. Um, you can see some pictures of our campus here. Um, the Hood community uh, is a smaller community. We have about 1,100 undergraduate students on campus and then about 1,000 graduate students um, that are coming onto campus for class. So what that looks like for you practically in your day to day is that your average class size at Hood is going to be about 15 students. Um, you'll never have a class larger than about 30. So you'll get to know the other students in your class. You'll get to know your professors. They'll know you by name. They'll know what you're interested in. Um, and they're a great resource for you on campus. Um, our students are coming from about 28 different states and 21 countries. Um, we are a residential campus, so students are required to live on campus their first three years, and we do have guaranteed housing. Um, here's an aerial view of campus here. Um, so Hood College is about 50 acres. We are located within Frederick. Um, we're in the residential uh, part of Frederick. We're about an eight minute walk from downtown. So while you can have a car on campus all four years, it's definitely not necessary to be able to go downtown and take advantage of um, the many great restaurants that are down there. Um, there's a lot of really great local places, um, lots of different stores. Um, there's a thriving arts and music scene in Frederick that students are able to take advantage of. Um, and in terms of internship, uh, there's a lot of industry within Frederick. And then our students absolutely have a lot of opportunities um, within the surrounding about 50 miles. Um, for students interested in political science, our proximity to DC um, is definitely beneficial. We're right down the road from Fort Detrick, where there's a lot of um, research that happens. And so our students who are interested in biology um, are able to take advantage of that. And uh, Hood is right off the I-270 corridor, um, which is really helpful for our students who are interested in computer science and various technology fields. Um, and this is a list of our majors here. Um, three that I'll point out that are new for us this year are art therapy, um, public health, and sustainability. Um, at Hood, it is very possible to double major, do a major and a minor. Um, you have until the end of your second year to officially declare a major. So as you are completing your liberal arts core, you have the opportunity to explore your various academic options and really figure out what you're passionate about studying and then doing after graduation. Some of our most popular majors on campus are um, business, biology, um, psychology. Nursing is a very popular major. We do have a direct entry nursing program. Um, and then also long criminal justice and education. Um, I will point out any of the majors that have an asterisk next to them, you can also be certified to teach secondary education. Um, so at Hood, while you will be spending a good amount of your time in class or doing work for class, there's also a lot of time outside of your academics to get to make your college experience your own. Um, and one way that happens is through extracurricular activities and clubs. Uh, so at Hood, there are over 50 student clubs and organizations that students are able to be involved with, everything from academic honor groups, groups that are interested in um, volunteering and advocacy, cultural groups. Um, we have student publications, such as our student newspaper, The Blue and Gray, um, or our literary magazine, Wisteria. Students can have radio shows. Um, there are faith-based organizations. So lots of different ways to plug in on campus. If there's something that you're involved in now that you'd like to continue in college and we don't already have a club for it, there's also the opportunity to be able to start your own. Um, on campus, we have a lot of traditions and events at Hood. Um, we have about 500 events a year. Outside of clubs, um, we do also have Division Three Athletics. There's a list of our varsity sports here. Um, and then we do have an equestrian club team and an esports team that also is a varsity team as of this year. So how do I apply? Hood uses the Common application and has a Hood-specific application. 
and we are rolling admission, which means we have no set deadlines throughout the year. Um, we start sending decisions out around mid-October. If you apply after that point, once we have your completed application, it's going to be about a two-week turnaround time. Um, and the only items we require to review your application are the application itself, which has the essay built into it, and your high school transcript. We are completely test optional for admission and scholarship consideration. And when we look at your application for admission, we will also automatically review for scholarship consideration. 100% of our students who are accepted to Hood will receive some form of financial aid. Um, so if you're interested, I definitely encourage you to keep in touch with me. Um, as I said, I am your admission counselor, so a primary point of contact for any questions you may have. My contact information is there. Um, and I would encourage you to visit our website and sign up for a virtual or on-campus visit to Hood College. We would love to be able to host you and show you um, around campus and get to know, know you. Um, so thank you very much and have a good rest of your night. Thank you. Next, we will be hearing from Marshall University. Hi, everyone. My name is Alyssa, and I am the Marshall University representative for Ural's area. I am going to begin by sharing my screen with you all. Alrighty, let's go ahead and start our slideshow. Awesome. So first and foremost, welcome. My name is Alyssa Hager and I am also a Marshall alum. So I graduated from Marshall University in 2017 there with my bachelor's in public communication. It's, it's showing the next slide. Like, oh no. If you, you can flip that, I believe. Okay, so swap displays maybe. There, there we go. Awesome, okay, sorry about that guys. Okay, so a little bit about, like I said, I am a Marshall alum, so I graduated from Marshall in 2017 with my bachelor's in public communication. So if you have any questions about what it's like to be a Marshall University member and a student, then definitely reach out to me. I'll include my contact information at the end of the slide. So just a little bit about Marshall University if you're not familiar. So we are a mid-sized public institution located in Huntington, West Virginia. So we're right along the Ohio River. Marshall University is home to about 13,000 students. And I like to say that we're not too big, but we're not too small. So you do get all the perks of a larger school. So we are a division one athletic school and you do get free admission to all of the games on campus. And we also are an R2 East research institution, which means that you get a lot of research opportunities as an undergraduate student and also as a graduate student. In terms of that mid-size feel, we have a 19 to one staff to student ratio, which means about 50% of your classes will have fewer than 20 students in them. So you definitely get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with professors and a lot of internship opportunities as well. And our campus is uniquely laid out. We're actually in the middle of the city and the city runs around us. So it only takes about 10 minutes to get from one side of campus to the other, which is really great whenever you're running late for your 8 a.m. So Marshall is made up of eight different colleges and we have over 150 different majors to choose from. So I won't list all of them, but I'll just go over a few. We do have our College of Arts and Media. That includes everything from theater to our graphic design program. We also have a great journalism program as well. Our Lewis College of Business includes our School of Business, which in 2020 was rated the best business school in the country. So we're super pumped about that. We also just received a $25 million donation from one of our alumni, Brad Smith, and we're looking to build a brand new business complex in the future. We also have a great accounting program. It is both nationally and internationally accredited in addition to our business school. So that puts us in the top 1% of the best business and accounting schools in the country. We also have a great marketing program and different types of majors like entrepreneurship as well. Our College of Education and Professional Development. So fun fact about Marshall University, it actually started out as a teaching college. So we've been doing it for at least 100 years. And if you're interested in becoming a teacher, would definitely recommend our program. Our early childhood education, elementary education is among the top best programs in the country. Our College of Health Professions is our largest college here at Marshall University. So that includes majors like dietetics, physical therapy. We also have a physical therapy school at Marshall University as well. We have majors like social work. We also have occupational therapy, sonography, any of those kinesiology majors. 
And then we also have majors like physician's assistant and occupational therapy. College of Engineering and Computer Sciences is home to all of our engineering programs. We have civil, mechanical, biomedical, and also an aviation engineering program in the making. And we do have computer science majors, including cybersecurity. Our College of Liberal Arts, so I might be a little biased because I graduated from the College of Liberal Arts here at Marshall, but we have a great communication studies program. We also have international affairs, creative writing, modern languages, and political science. This is also where our psychology majors are housed. And you can get your bachelor's, your master's, and your PhD in psychology at Marshall. So our College of Science is made up of all of those pre's. So we have pre-med, we have pre-pharmacy, we have pre-dentistry, and pre-veterinarian. I like to mention that we have a med school and a pharmacy school at Marshall, and we do offer an early assurance program. It doesn't guarantee you admittance into pharmacy or med school, but it does offer you an interview. So for our university college, that's reserved for students who aren't quite sure what they want to major in yet because, you know, you're only 18 and it's totally fair that you don't know what you want to be in five years. So you do get into your sophomore year before you have to decide or declare a major, but our university college is made up of people who are gonna help you decide that. So they'll take you to personality quizzes, they'll help you register for classes, so you definitely have time. So our admission requirements are pretty simple. We are test optional, but these are general admission requirements. We'll accept a 2.0 GPA with a 19 ACT or a 990 SAT. We'll also accept a 3.0 GPA with a 16 ACT or an 880 SAT. And then these are some majors with special requirements as well. So for admission, we just need a completed application, a $40 application fee, a copy of your transcript, and a copy of your test scores. If after this presentation you would like to apply to Marshall University, I'll include my email. So all you have to do is just email me after you apply, and I can waive that $40 application fee for you. So these are our merit-based scholarships. I do like to mention that Marshall is among the 100 most affordable colleges in the country. So we we'll definitely check that out as well. We also have a great scholarship portal. We also have a lot of things related to our academic life, including career services, tutoring, writing center, counseling, advising, and our student help programs. And if you have any questions, then please feel free to email me or recruitment at marshall.edu. And be sure to visit us. We are doing on-campus tours right now, but thank you so much. Thank you. Next, we will hear, be hearing from West Liberty University. All righty, let me share my screen here. All right. So my name is Edward Mitchum and I'm in a regional uh, rep with uh, West Liberty University. I've been with West Liberty for eight years now and I actually live here in Virginia and cover the whole state. So I am, uh, during non-COVID times, I'm all over the state. Um, here's a, uh, my contact information. If you need to get in contact with me, it's uh, edward.mitchum at westliberty.edu. And then there's my office number um, as well. And then just a little bit about our school. Uh, we are one of the safest campuses in West Virginia. Uh, we have the highest four-year public graduation rate in the state. And then we also, uh, we're a small school. We have about 2,500 students, uh, 15 students to a professor, and an average class of about 25 students. Um, about 90% of our students actually receive financial aid. Um, and we award over $6 million uh, annually in scholarships. Uh, we have about 70 different majors, 50 different clubs and organizations, and we're also Division II athletics. And then down here at the bottom, if you look, we are, whoops, sorry, we are, we are in the Northern Panhandle of West Virginia. So we're about 15 minutes to Ohio and about 15 minutes to Pennsylvania, um, only about 45 minutes to uh, Pittsburgh. We were founded in uh, 1937. So we're the oldest institute of higher education in West Virginia. And then this gives you just a little bit um, 
of an idea of how far we are uh, from the different cities in Virginia. So if you're in that Northern Virginia area, we left that out, but it's probably about five hours or so from that area. And then if you live in the following counties, Clark, Frederick, Loudoun, Rockingham, Shenandoah, or Warren counties, you actually qualify for a reduced rate. So we call that the Metro rate. It's a little bit less than out of state and a little bit more than in-state tuition. Uh, these are black and gold days. These are kind of like many open houses. So the dates there are on the right. Um, we have one October 14th, 31st, November 11th, and December 4th. And those are going to be virtual. And if you attend, you'll actually be entered in for a chance to win a $1,000 scholarship just, just for attending. Um, and then something um, this year because of the COVID-19 pandemic, we are going to be a test optional school um, this year for fall 2021. So if you do not get to take the ACT or SAT um, because of COVID related um, problems, then you can actually just apply and we will um, consider your application without uh, a test score. And then on our website, it's really cool. If you go to westliberty.edu slash admissions, you can chat with us um, Monday through Friday from eight until four. Um, that's the you chat. And then if those times don't work for you, you can actually do um, a book me appointment and we can meet with you um, pretty much anytime up until about 9 p.m. And then our different social media links were on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. And then I have a 30 second video and then that will wrap up my presentation. All right, guys, thank you, that's it. Thank you. And lastly, we'll be hearing from Temple University, Japan campus. Thank you, Anna. I'm gonna share my screen. Yes, hello from Tokyo and Temple University, Japan campus. I'll call TJ for short. Uh, my name is Ha, admissions counselor from TUJ. Uh, so TUJ is the international branch campus of Temple University main campus in Philadelphia. Uh, Temple University is one of the largest public research universities in the US. Uh, Temple also has another campus in Rome, Italy, so uh, it's very easy for students to transfer among the three campuses. For example, you can start at the Japan campus, uh, spend one or two semesters at Rome campus, or you can transfer back to the main campus in Philadelphia to finish your degree. But many of our students spend all four years in Japan. Uh, we, offer, uh, we offer 10 majors in liberal arts field. Uh, that student can spend all four years and earn the degree in Tokyo. Please look at the screen for the list of majors we offer. The most popular majors are international business studies, communication studies, international affairs, uh, art, just to name a few. We also offer the 2 plus 2 computer science program. So you spend the first two years in Japan and the last two years in to finish the degree. And all classes at TJ are in English, so you don't need to know any Japanese to apply. Uh, we are located in Sangen Jaya in Tokyo. It, this area is just a five minute train right away from Shibuya Station. Shibuya Station is in the middle of the map. And for those who don't know, Shibuya is, is like Times Square in New York. It's the most popular district for young people in Tokyo and it's the most visited spot for tourism in Japan. So our students really like the uh, campus location because after classes, they can just go to Shibuya to enjoy because there are a lot of fun activities there. So if you really like an, uh, to study in an urban campus, we truly are an urban campus. 
office in Tokyo. So in this short presentation, I just want to give you three reasons why you should choose TUJ. Because uh, we're American, we're affordable, with achievable aspects. Uh, so we look at in Tokyo, Japan, with a degree, uh, you'll be earning will be temporary degree, will be, and you'll be earning American credits. On the degree at one of the Japan campus, it will be temporary degree. So exactly 100% uh, what uh, the students in the campus and the other will earn. But the difference is that you just do it in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, and if you're doing AP, IB, or taking any college credits, uh, those credits are transferable to TJ, which helps you to save time, money, and efforts. Uh, Your and audio is cutting in and out a little bit. It's just, it's going from like loud to quiet. Oh, oh, really? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I will. That, that sounds better. Maybe if you like it hold it up. Okay, I see. Yeah, probably my headphone has a problem. Sorry about that. Um, yes, yeah, so in terms of student population, we have a very diverse, very international student body. 40% uh, of our students are from the US, 40% from Japan, and the rest from 60 other countries. The same thing applies to the faculty members. We have faculty members from all over the world having international experiences in their fields. We also have professors from the main campus in Philadelphia coming to TJ to teach on frequent basis. And uh, one of the reasons why students choose TJ is because of this affordability. Uh, this chart here shows TJ's tuition fee compared to a public and private four-year university in the US. It's about $15,000 per year. Uh, so it's, it's about 40 to 50% lower than so it's even cheaper for you to uh, study abroad out of the country than going out of state. Um, and you still still be able to earn an American degree. So the question is why not? Um, and since we're American school, so you can use American benefits like props, uh, GI Bill, or use private loans. We also offer merit-based scholarship, which is which are very easy to apply. And we look at it in Tokyo. Uh, Tokyo, as you know, is the biggest in Japan. Japan is the most developed city in Asia, so there are many opportunities for students in terms of part-time jobs, internship, and full-time jobs after, the, uh, after graduation. Uh, talking about jobs, we have the Career Development Office to help students finding jobs, uh, prepare for job hunting, how to write resume, for example. Uh, and internship is, uh, is a distinctive feature of TJ education. Uh, this is Amani, she's a political science major and she took part in the internship program at the U.S. Embassy in Tokyo. She said that the experience was very helpful in advancing her career prospects. And I know that the Tokyo Olympic has been postponed until next year, but we organized an on-campus job fairs. Uh, we invited companies like NBC, the very famous news channel, uh, Omega, the famous watch brand, to the campus to recruit TJ students for either part-time, internship, or volunteering positions. Um, so this is just one of the events that, uh, that we've organized for our students in terms of career development. Uh, and with such a uh, committed and experienced career de development office, our employment rate is max percent Many international students choose to stay in Japan after graduation because having working experience overseas will be very helpful for your career. Uh, so this is Jasmine. She's an American student. She graduated two years ago with an art degree, and now she's working for the Japan Times. Uh, the Japan Times is the biggest English-speaking newspaper in Japan. Uh, it's like the New York Times, the Washington Post in the US. Yes, and this is one of her artworks for the newspaper. And even if you go not to uh, study or to work in a foreign country, you can go. It, there are opportunities for you when you go back to your home country. Uh, this is James. Uh, he is now working as a project manager at Panda Manco in the US, in California. Yes, that's all about TJ and, uh, and this is my uh, contact details and also have a QR code here for you to scan. It will lead you to our website. Thank you so much for listening to my presentation and I hope you have to stay safe and healthy. Thank you. So uh, thank you all for joining us. We do have a few minutes left, so I will invite uh, all of the presenters if they would like to come back on and share any additional information or something about their university. But um, before anyone leaves, I'll just say uh, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback you can provide. 
Also, this was just many, one of many sessions being hosted, so be sure to check out the full sign up. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this recording online. Um, both of those things are available at strivescan.com slash Virginia. And uh, now anybody can. Anyone can take it away. I think this year, especially, it's important to know that if you have questions about our admission policies as they have been changing, I think, for all of our schools in regards to anything from test scores to how we're awarding scholarships to deadlines, please reach out. We are here to support you and to help you through this process. Um, we want to make this as um, I think most of us want to be as transparent as possible um, to help alleviate your stress and the stress of your family right now. If anyone has anything else they'd like to add, they can go ahead. All right, well, it looks like there aren't any uh, Q&A questions, so I'll just say uh, good night and goodbye to everyone. Um, I hope you all have a good rest of your evening and uh, bye now.